the, the, the Mishnah. Nun, al, nun Aleph from the base. <coughs> the last two lines on the page. Anodim in Acholov. Person makes a neti, he's not going to benefit from milk. Drink milk. Buta Bakum. He's permitted to benefit from the way, the way of the milk. Rabiosi Yosa. Rabiosi is not. Cholov includes way. Kum. Kum is way. Minakum. A person makes a neti, he's not going to benefit. Kum is the way. Buta Bakholov. And it seems from over here, Rabiosi agrees. Cholov mm. means kum, but kum does not mean cholov. Okay? Abashol Omer, Hanodim in Agvino. So the Ron explains, although most cheeses are salty, they're not bland. It's when a person says Gvino, he means salty cheese, right? But non salty, not. Abashol Omer, Hanodim in Agvino, Osid Bo, Bain Malucha Be Utvelo. Whether it's salty or non salty, which although the majority. Vina includes all kinds of cheeses. Hanodim in Abosar. Okay, now this is important here. First makes a netter, he's not going to benefit from Bosar. He's permitted to meat gravy. He's permitted to eat but he, the spot the cooks he have on the bottom of the pot. Residue, he's permitted. It's, it's, it's permitted. Bosar, reduce Say Boston includes includes meat gravy, includes the keeper. Okay? No, he's it's a question what the is a rebiosio. Some of go the gears is rebios because it's consistent. Machlokis the Chachom Rebiosi. Om Rebuda. So Rebuda says Ma approve it, my sev also of tarfon, the baitim or the bay bayim chinis bashlu emo that you had eggs that were cooked with meat and because the eggs were absorbed with the taste of the meat you weren't yes. permitted to eat the meat, the, the eggs. Mm -hmm. So you see what it, when you say boss it doesn't only mean the meat, it means any derivative of the meat. So that would be meat gravy and the keeper. You know it's interesting, Rabbi Yehuda throughout Shas, throughout for example, he argues with the Chachomim, he says, but I'll prove you that I'm right because there was an incident that happened and the Chachomim Either suggested this, what? What is it? Is machlok is the first mission in, su in sukkah? How high could a sukkah be? The chacham say sukkah could be maximum 20 amos. It's more than 20 amos to schach to the floor. It's possible. The reader says no. Could be more. 40, 50 amos he could have. So the gemara so review says I'll bring you proof. It was an incident with the chacham and he lay Amalka that she built a sukkah that was more than 20 amos and the chacham went in. They went into the sukkah. And they didn't, they didn't in any way criticize her. See, see, I'm right. The Chum said, if she realized she was a woman. There's no proof in because she was a woman. A woman's not obligated. Mar said, but it was for her children. With Chinuch, they were less than a certain age. But he always brings proof from an incident. See, here also, Rebu says, no, it's us. I'll prove it to you. Because there was an incident where they cooked eggs with, with, with meat. And because the eggs were absorbed with the meat, they ruled you're not permitted to eat the eggs. So you see, anything that's absorbed with the meat is included within the nether. Amr Lo, they said, has no relevance, has no shaykhus. Mm. They said, Kena Dover. What happened, well, just before we go for it, let's say a person makes a netter, I will not eat this piece of meat. So what is that meat? It's a chet mm -hmm. It's an object of this. Now you take that meat and you cook it with vegetables. Mm. And now, and there's no shishim versus the meat. Are you permitted to eat the vegetables? Everybody agrees. Yeah. You're not, even the chacham agree, because it's a chet yeah. Here a person, you already had gravy. You had meat gravy. You had keeper. You had eggs that were cooked with meat. Now I make a netter. I will not eat meat. I, uh, meat is off limits. So the Chal said that those eggs and the vegetables were all permitted. Because when you cooked it, the meat that it absorbed wasn't, wasn't, wasn't the Chal Shal yeah. They're arguing when you say meat, what does meat mean? Mm -hmm. But of course, if you have an object which is usher, meat is absorbed in something, of course you're not permitted to eat it. So the incident with Tarfin was, the person said, meat is off limits to me. And then somebody cooked eggs with meat. So of course, so what did the eggs absorb? They absorb meat that you're not permitted to eat. So of course it's also. It's not worse than absorbing the veil or chazer, whatever it may be. Co right, but it was cooked before now and it made that. That that absorbed meat, is that called bosser? It's not called bosser. Right, that, that's what he answered. Omelo kena dover. A mosa bisman shiomar. Gimel. Bisman shiomar. Bosser ze olai. Right? 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 Right?
Right? He says, this meat is not permitted to me. And now it falls into a mixture. So if you have 60, it's permitted. You don't have 60, you're not permitted to eat it. Right? Minayayin muter. Now, new thing. Person makes an I will not have wine. Muter betav sheish bayayin. Now, if you have a, 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 a certain food item, and it, one, the ingredients is wine, you're permitted to eat it. Same t- it's like meat craving. Yain means yain by itself. We're not talking about the wine that was us that fell into the... Right. We're talking about the wine was there. Omakotim yain zeh olai. Right? Sh'ani toim, or sh'ani toim, nofel tafshil, m'yeshu v'no sintam, ariz oser. Same thing. That's like the like a boss in the velo, like we said before. Now this run is very, very, very fundamental run, very important run here. Let's take a look at the run. Third line says, If the person says he will not eat this piece of meat, so the mission says, if this piece of meat now it demingles, if it's less than 60, you're not permitted to eat it. If it's the mixture is more than 60, you're permitted to eat it. We're talking about netter, correct? That's what we're saying. No sinta <coughs> means, because we say, if something, the, the dilution is more than 60 to 1, you will not taste the minority and the majority, because that's the degree of dilution. No sinta means it's less than shisha. Okay, it's the Mishnah. Nesarvach, now, we have a principle which is an introduction. Mar says a Bryce is a Bayo. Bryce is a Bayo that if you have Bayesh and Old to be Yomtiv, an egg that's laid on Yomtiv, what's the law? You're not permitted to eat the egg. It's Mukta. Okay? Now that egg falls into a thousand eggs. Permit eggs that were laid before Yomtiv. They're all not permitted. What happens if you're not permitted? We'll see. What happens if one of that mix falls into another thousand? Mm-hmm. See, like you have like a Svex Faker. Right? Multiple questions. Not permitted. Why? Said so Mercy, it's Dov Sheesh Lamatiri. Dov Sheesh Lamatiri. Since, oh, since ultimately it's going to be permitted, if the laws of books have no relevance. Therefore, Dov Sheesh Lamatiri, I feel the bell of Loboto. Something which ultimately will be permitted, it's not subsumed even if you have a thousand to one. I feel the bell of Loboto. You have to wait till the Yom Tiv, till the Shabbos, and then you'll, you'll be able to, to eat it. Now the question is what's the rationale? Why? It's all rabbinical. On the Torah level, it, it's, it's subsumed. But rabbinically, it's not subsumed. What's, what, what, what's the rationale? Well, it's not simple. According to Rashi, it's from the Jirabonah, and according to the Ramel, it's the Raisa. Muktza, of course, it's Jirabonah. Mm-hmm. Because, because Muktza, according to Rashi and Beyo, <coughs> it's a Jirabonah. Mm-hmm. According to the Ran, it's a Doraisa. Dovashish Matir is not Boto. Because we're talking about Neder over here. A Neder is a Dovashish Matir in the verses later. Because mm-hmm. when well, you make a Neder, then you want to annul it. You go before a, a panel, a Vesden, you can annul it. So it's it could be undone. So it's not a bona fide, it's not something fixed to be us forever. Meaning the Gemara says if you have an, a, 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 a bear, an egg that's laid from, the, the mother hen was a trefer, had a, had a perforated lung, and now it lays that egg, you're not permitted to eat the egg, because that's bear's trefer. It's an egg laid from a, a chicken that's trefer. Of course, whatever status the, the, the hen has, the egg has the same status. If that egg falls into into a mixture, 60 to 1, it, it's butter. Because that, that cannot be in any way be undone. That's a, that's a fixed permission, and therefore, it's usher permanently. Okay. The Koshul Rabus, it says, I know the Echon mi Yesh be no sintam, Yesh be min ho oser, kade litin tam, vishal heter, go to leka shishim, vishal heter, raise oser. That's the mission. No sintam means it's less than 60. But if it's 60 or more, then it's butter, right? If you have anything, a ratio 60 to 1 is butter. The Kashul Ravusa Zal, the great Chachobim, the great Rishon, the Estaqua, Hechem in Hocha, Miesh Benosin Tam Osur, says if it's less than 60, you're not permitted, Mashma, Ho Aimbo Benosin Tam. So the inference of the mission is, but if you, you, you're not able to detect it, Mutter, if it's 60 to 1, you're permitted. I von the Dorm, Doshe Shlomatirinu, Kedamrino, Lakam Perk, Hanodim in Ayerak, a netter, because since it could be nullified, it's not a permanent disser. Right? And the Gemara says, Mishum de mitzah lechuli If you make a netter, there's a mitzah to undo it. So that means it's meant, it's not meant to remain in, in, in a permanent state. Midrav Nosem v'kaim alon, kol dov sheish matir afir be'elof lo botel. So how could the Mishnah say, when is the netter not botel, when it's no sintam, when it's less than 60, but the inference is if it's more than 60, when it's, the dilution is total. It can, it's clear, dov sheish matir afir be'elof lo botel. Even if you have a thousand to one, if it's something which is not fixed as a, something which is permanently usher, it never, it's never subsumed. Even if you have a thousand to one, which is not the Mishnah, 
So how do we reckon the Sal the Mishnah with the Gemara later? That's the that's the question of Dushonim, the Yishlomer. The Chiyamina feel velf lo botel hani mili min benino. When do we say if you have regardless of ratio, it's not subsumed if it's all the same species? All the examples are like eggs and eggs, it's the same species, uh, meat and meat, whatever it may be. I feel velf lo botel. Avod hoche kiktoni nisari ba'acher. Or what's above? When it says over in this ah, yeah, ba'acher, yeah, b'she'ino mino. It's it mixed into, into another species, right? Dumya the beish nispash luimo. Kol she'ino mino. He says dumya the beim shinispash luimo. Like simply four, we said if you have meat cooked with with meat, eggs and meat. So what is it? Meat is one species. Eggs is another. So it says if you have sixty times as much of the meat, it's subsumed. Right? It's no si tam it's oser. So what is eggs and meat? That's min bein omino. Two different species. Choshein omino. I feel I feel sheish matir ben no si tam. If it's what? If it's min bein omino, it's only us only once no si tam. Even though it's dov sheish matirin. So let's say you would have mukta falling into mukta. That's the, the the classical example of of dov sheish matirin. Because if the omtef there's no mukta, it falls into a, a mixture of other foods. And you have 60 to 1, you permit to eat it, even though there's eggs, the egg that was laid on Yom Tif is part of the ingredient of that particular food item. Because since you're not able to identify it, you'd be permitted. Well, this, this is the principle. We, we didn't, you, I, the Ron's going to talk to give you the rationale. He's just setting facts. The example, if the mixture is the same, same species, permitted, not permitted, if, if it could be undone, it's not a permanent iser, then we don't apply the pr uh, principle of subsuming. But if it's two different species, even though ultimately it will be permitted or could be permitted, it is subsumed. If you have 60 to 1. This, this is the differentiator. He's going to talk. You know, you can't identify it. You told me you can't be. Uh, can't, can't identify it. Whenever you say bitl, it can't be identified. You have a piece of non kosher meat falling to a thousand pieces of kosher meat, right? It's not. If you could identify that not kosher, kosher piece of meat, you have to take it out. Subsuming is if you can locate it, right? So then it's subsumed by the majority. That, that's the law of Bittl. Okay? Vaidit nam seches chalo. He brings proof to this. That when we stand, Dov sheh shematir afil ve'elfo botir. Ham no sein zayin. Vega. Ham no tail. Ham no tail. Sor. Okay. Sor mi isa schitim. A person takes yeast. Yeast from wheat, from wheat dough, okay? Latochi sesores, and he put it into uh, a dough made of rice, a rice dough. So what do we do? We're min bein omino. No, right. don't forget about the ingredients. We're talking about you know rice. I'm not talking. About, he's getting all excited about the rice bread. Okay, so we're talking about he takes yeast from a, a dough yeast from wheat and puts it into rice. Okay, im yeshbob in those yeshbob tam dogan chayevus. It says, if you now, the only, what, what, do you, what do you have to t take challah from? Only from the five species, yeah. from the five grains. Rice is not, it's not one yeah. of the grains, so you, you have no chiyav challah. Right. But now you took the yeast, which is, which is uh, wheat yeast, right. and now you're causing the rice yeah. bread right. to rise. Right. So if you taste the, the, the yeast of the grain, of the wheat in that, yeah. we see the, the rice gr bread as wheat bread. Right. So if it's wheat bread, you have to take challah, because <coughs> it's the equivalent of what? Of what? Of, of five minims, one mm -hmm. of the five species of grains. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to taste it, then you have to take, you have to take challah. If not, you don't. Imkain, omru ha-teba loser b'choshu. Bimino. Shlo bimino. Excuse me. Imkain, lom omru ha-teba loser b'choshu. Tebo asis b'choshu. Bimino. Tevel falls into something else. It asses, even if it's what, it's a thousand to one. Shlobe binum no sintam. The tevel dov sheish matirinu. Tevel is dov sheish matirin. Why is dov sheish matirin? Tevel, because you correct it. What's tevel? Tevel is untied grain. How do you correct it? It's not permanent. You can tie it. Because if you mafresh, it's no longer tevel. So therefore, it's not something. Even though tevel, if you leave it alone, it'll remain tevel. But you're able to, you're able to, it doesn't have to, see, mukta naturally by itself <coughs> becomes permitted. 
Once Shabbos is over, Yom Tov is over, it's no longer Mukta. But we gave the exam netter. Unless you go before the panel, the netter stays. Yeah. But since you could annul it, and there's a mitzvah to annul it, it's not meant to remain permanent. So what's Tevel? It's meant to be tithe. So therefore the Isser is not fixed. Yet, we make a differentiation whether it's Mino or Menum. If it's the same species, it's not subsumed. If it's not the same species, it is subsumed. Right? Tevel Dov Sheish Matirinu Vafilo Arigtoni Shlo Bemino Vno Sintam Hachanami So you see clearly, so it's not difficult. The mission is speaking, when is it not bought? When is it, why is it bottle here? So with eggs and meat. The meat is Dov Sheish Matirin. So it says, if the six, less than 60 to 1 and the meat is absorbed into the eggs, you can't eat the meat, the eggs. But if it's 60, so what's eggs and meat? It's subsumed. Okay. He still didn't give you the rationale of what, what the, the, the mechanics is. Rabbi said over the name of Rabbi Yeshua. Rabbi Yeshua said over the name of Rabbi Yeshua. If it's the same species, even a minuscule prohibits the whole mixture. What about it's enomatirin? Could go in truma. What if a person already tied the truma? Truma falls into something else. You have a ratio of what? A hundred to one. Hundred to one. Even min bimino, right? Min bimino shlo bimino sentam. Halein nidri maat ovid lo. So Rishami says, what about nedarim, right? Mat of it loan, Kedoshi Shamatirin. See, the question is, do we see a matter like Doshi Shamatirin, Doshi Enlo Matirin? O Kedoshi Enlo Matirin. Mistabro, so the Yushami answers, Mistabro, it's logical to say, Mabdinik Doshi Eshlo Matirin. We treat a matter like Doshi Shamatirin. The Dino and Taman Shazokin, Oka and Nedumi Koro. The Zokin, when he nullifies the netter, what happens when you nullify a netter? It's like it never existed. So it's, it becomes totally mutter. Mutter as if it never existed. So yeah, the as I we learned in the mission it says neder. How could you say it's We have a Mishnah that says that if it mixes into eno mino, it, 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 it's bottle. You see, of course it's eno mino. That's why it's, it's bottle because it's not the same species. When do we say davshishmatirin is not subsumed? If it's the same species, but that that it says that it is, we speak that case is speaking with min be'enuim. They're not the same. They're not like species. Okay, so that's w that's we're sending down this principle. If it's min be'mino, it's a like species. It's not botel. Unlike it is botel. That's the principle. Okay, now we ask a phenomenal question. What's the halacha? We have a thing. There's a difference in Ashkenazim and Svardim. If I cook vegetables in a milk pot within 24 hours that you cook milk, now you want those vegetables with meat. Svardim say 100% permitted because it's, it's not by not that tera, right? Because again, cooked potatoes, potatoes in, in a meat pot, and after you take them out of the meat pot, meat pot was clean, and you, c you cooked meat within 24 hours. Now you want to serve those potatoes with sour cream or with butter. Are you permitted? Right? So there's a machlokas, the Ramon and the Machab. According to Shulchan Aruch, it's 100% permitted. Lachatchilo, you could serve those potatoes with sour cream with butter. Rabbo says no. It's based on Rashi. It's called Chumr de Rashi. Uh, Ashkenazi Jews should not. If you put the cream or the butter, you're permitted to eat it. But in, in terms of what's proper, you should not. Why? What's the reason? What? What? Why? The Dievet. Now, once you put it, yeah. you're, allowed you're allowed to eat it with the milk. You don't have to throw it away. Not you don't have to throw it away. Because even Rashi, the Rama, it's called Chumr de Rashi. It's a stringency. But what's the rationale? Very interesting. The halacha is that anything which comes from, from a, a source which is also which is forbidden. Let's say you cook non-kosher meat in a pot, and you cook, cook potatoes in the pot. Right. So now let's understand. The, there's a concept which is discussed in the Gemara Chum, Gemara in Avodah Zarah, it's called Tam Kadosh, if it's weakened. You know, if something passes through many levels of, of transfer, it, the taste becomes less intense. It becomes like a weaker taste. It's less mm -hmm. intense. So if something ha comes from a forbidden source, like Nevelo or Chazer, as weakened as it is, as diluted as it is, 
unless you don't taste it whatsoever, it's also. Even Tam Kolosh, even a, a less intense, if it's putrid after 24 hours, it's nothing. Right? Mistakenly, you cook kosher food in a non kosher pot after 24 <coughs> hours, where the pot was clean. So, what did it absorb? What was absorbed in the walls of the pot? 100%. That's called no Tam Levgam. No Tam Levgam is 100% permitted. It's putrid. What it contributed into the food, since 24 hours passed, the taste in the walls became putrid. So it contributes something which is putrid. Putrid is, doesn't prohibit. But within 24 hours, the, it's called viable taste, what's in the wall. So even though when it may enter into the kosher food, it may be weakened, it's not as intense. It's not like cooking meat and potatoes in the same pot. Mm. Of course, here it went into the pot. Now the pot has to pass th in, into the food. So it's a, a second pass through, a third pass through, not bar not. means no sintam bar no sintam. If it's not kosher, it's irrelevant. It, it, it's, it's also, it's forbidden. Right? What about if it's heter? Milk, dairy is permitted. Permitted dairy. If you'd want to eat these potatoes just by themselves without meat, what is it? Permitted. Right? Now I have a question. Could I, now can I put cream on the potatoes? So the potato I'm putting the cream on, what is the potato absorbed with? With a permitted taste which has been weakened, which is not intense. A, a permitted source which has been weakened, it's not in its, in its an intense form, is called parv. No, 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 the potatoes, you cook potatoes within the pot within 24 hours. So the taste that was, the contribution was viable taste, not future taste. But factually, the meat, it's weakened. Why? Because the meat went into the pot, and now the pot, what's absorbed now, what's in the pot, it's transferred into the water, into the food. It's, it's, it's being passed through many, many levels. It's weakened. So let's say before I put cream on it, before I put cream on the potatoes, this potato is what? Is a part of a potato. Why? Because it's absorbed with a, a permitted taste, which is weakened. A weakened permitted taste is not called taste. It's not called taste, period. No you, don't taste, no, you don't taste the milk. You won't taste the milk. You will not taste the milk in that potato. Wait, but that's even, even, even Ashkenaz. Even Ashkenaz. Even Ashkenaz. That's, 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 that's the halacha. That's the basic halacha. Right? Wait, wait one second. So now, according to Mechaber, you even you add cream to it. So you're adding cream to what kind of potato? A parva potato? Of course, unless dairy is intense, that's called parva. You have the same thing with meat. You cook meat potato, meat potatoes in a meat pot. Same thing. The potato, after everything said and done, is a part of a potato. I won't put cream or vice. I won't put meat gravy on the potato that's cooked in the dairy pot. When I'm putting the meat gravy on what kind of potato? A part of a potato. It's not a problem. Because it went through the pot. Because it's not, it, it's only when it's in its, it, in its intense form. But if it's kolush, kolush means weakened, it's, it's part of it. Okay? So therefore, that's what people, let's say a person, let's say uses a, a, a baking pan. You make a flesh cook, kugel, right? And then the, the, the wife needs an extra bed, she bakes a coffee cake in there, power of coffee cake. Now could you eat that coffee cake with a cup of, with a cup of coffee, right? So it's fired no problem. If you're an Ashkenaz, that, that cake cannot be eaten, eat, you have to have a non-dairy creamer. That's Chumar de Rashi. No, the oven's something else. The oven, the oven is a different concept. That's why the dairy equipment Dairy, that's dairy equipment. That's, that's why the OU, you ever see DE? Right. Dairy equipment, meaning it's, it's a parv, but you should not eat it with a meat, with meat. Well, together with, you can eat it during the same meal. If you want to have the cake and have the coffee afterwards, vice versa, it's not a problem. It's only you having the coffee together with the cake. You have the cake in your mouth and you're drinking dairy coffee. That's what, a problem. What you're saying, the OU dairy equipment is only for Ashkenazi. Yeah, for Sparvi, dairy equipment is nothing. It means nothing. It's parv, 100% parv. You could have it with they, they stopped the, there's no more DE, buddy. Because it became too, too uh, confusing. People didn't know what it meant. They, DE, that means it's, it's milk, but it's not. So they took it off totally. They, they, you won't find it. It's either dairy or, or it just says OU. Right, okay. So now, what, now we have a shy look. So what, what's, what's Chumr the Rashi? What's Chumr the Rashi? So why we machmi? If, the, if even we agree, the Ashkenazim agreed, the halach is like the machaber. What's the machaber? Rashi cites an opinion. Of course, there's a difference when, you, when you, there's a difference. He, there are two ways to learn the Gemara. It says that if you cook fish in a pot 
and then you will put cream on it, is it per permitted or not? It says, <coughs> no, so this question what the case of the Gemara is. Of course, you can learn the case. That it says, it says, it says, um, if you take fish and you put cream on, is it speaking you cook the fish in a dairy pot, in, in a parva pot, in a parva pot, and then you put it on a flake of plate? Yeah? Maybe you took, no, no, hot. You took it out of, out of the pot, boiling hot. I put it now on a flashka plate. Now I take the p fish off the plate, put it on a dairy plate. No problem so far. And now I want to put cream on it. So the Mara says that's permitted. Right? That's the way Rashi learns the case. It's not because well, you cook the fish in, in the flashka in the dairy, in the flashka pot. It was cooked in a parva pot. Okay. Now you put it on a fleshka plate. Now you trance it. It's still hot. You put it on a, par on a, a dairy plate. Now you want to put cream. You can't. Even Rashi agrees. Why? No, 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 no. Because he says when you cook something, cooking the process, you take it out from its source. Yeah? There's two ways to learn the Gemara. Speaking of what you cook it in a dairy pot, in a f meat pot, and now you take it out and then you put cream. That's the way the Mechaba learns, and that's really the, the real... Everybody. The main, the classical understanding of the Gemara. See, so even though you cooked it where it actually takes it out from its, from its, from its source, it's still weakened. It's still weakened. But Rashi cites, he recites a Rivon. He recites a Rivon. He says, no, that when you cook something, it takes it out from its source. That's called intense taste. It's intense taste. Therefore, you can't. So what's the case in the, in the Gemara? He cooked it in a parva pot. Put it on a fleshka plate even though it's boiling hot and it's on, but since it's not the process, what's cooking? It yeah. circulates. It goes in the wall, comes out of the wall. Then, that's when you put, put, permit it to put cream on the potato. But that even after you, take it off the after you take it off the flesh of the plate. But that's called, that's churma de Rashi. That's one interpretation Rashi brings in the Gemara. So that's the stringency of Rashi. The bidi ebed, if you put the cream on, even the Ashkenazi, you could eat it. Even it was cooked in a meat pot. Even it was cooked in a meat pot. Mechabu learns the case is simple. He cooked it in a meat pot. You took it out. You can put cream on it. But since Rashi cites the other possibility, therefore it's called Chumr the Rashi. Mechatchil Ashkenazim don't do it. But if you did it, so if you have the, the case or the cake in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the meat baking pan and the person afterwards put ice cream on top of the cake, you can eat the cake with the ice cream. Because the ice cream is already on the cake. That's like the, the cream on the fish. That's been the evidence. No, it's not. You're, it's, once it's done, even Chathchilu, you permit it to eat it. It's not, I'll be a tzaddik, I'm not going to eat it. No. Because it's a chumrah. You, you, once it's done, you can eat it. It's not well, because you have nothing else, I'll pass on dessert. No, it's not. You shouldn't do it. Yeah, you, you shouldn't. But if it's done, once it's done, it's 100% permitted to eat. So these are machlokas now. There's an interesting shayla. No, no, it's wrong. It's wrong. So now there's a question. Is this a famous... Now, what's the halacha? Mistakenly, you cook... In a, let's say you have a non kosher pot. Non kosher pot. We have a, a, a kosher meat pot. And you cook up a cream of mushroom soup, soup. Real, real cream. Right? Dairy. Are you permitted to eat the soup? Non kosher pot? Not meat, kosher meat, non kosher meat doesn't make a difference. It's after 24 hours. Oh. Clean pot. Right? Are you, and now you cook mistakenly, you cook cream of, cream of mushroom soup in that pot. The is you could eat 100%. You could serve it to the greatest Tam rabbis. Tam. To the tzaddikei ador, you could serve that. Of course, it's tam of gam. Because after 24 hours, what's yeah. absorbed is putrid. So there's no contribution from the pot into the, into the dairy. Right? That's the that's halacha. So there's a question now. If you have not bar not that tater, the case of the fish, and you cook the fish in a meat pot after 24 hours, do we apply churma de rashi to that case? No, it's a shah. Okay, you're the shaman. You cook meat in a, in a, in a pot. You wait 24 hours, and then you cook potatoes or vegetables in that pot. So you're only using it after 24 hours. So even if it's within 24 hours, it's a stringency. After 24 hours, it's future, It's another stringency. Because l'chatchili, you're not supposed to cook, right? Let's say I knew for a fact the meat was a, the pot was a meat pot, and, and I'm a shorter pot, so you permit to cook the dairy in there. You're definitely not. You're not permitted, rabbinically. Even after, it's only mistakenly if you did it, we allow you, because factually there's nothing absorbed. But l'chatchili, you're not supposed to. And if you did it, you know, we penalize you. We don't let you eat the food. That's the halacha. It's called the kanas. We penalize person. You have to throw out the food. 
A person deliberately cook, cooks meat, dairy in a meat pot, even it's no stam of gam, it's also lechol. You're not permitted to eat it. That's not loch, it's a knast. It's more than about a zora. Same thing. Same thing. Then you could eat it. The pot, you could eat it, not a problem. You could eat it. Because okay. actually, what was contributed into the food? Nothing. There's nothing in this. No stam of gam. No, you have to purge it. Because since the pot is a meat pot, it has to be purged. Otherwise, it can't, it can't be used for dairy, it can't be used for meat, it can't be used for either. You have to pot us be purged. The same thing with a, with, a, with a utensil, a spoon. You take a meat, a meat spoon and you stir a dairy pot, right? Or a ladle. You take a ladle, put it into the pot to ladle out uh, dairy soup. And it's a meat ladle. It's what? It's after 24 hours, not a problem. You can eat the soup. But the ladle has to be kosher, it has to be purged. Right, because it's absorbed. It's a meat ladle absorbed with dairy, so it has to be purged. Okay, that's the halacha. It didn't. It didn't absorb because it's putrid. Whatever it absorbed is putrid. Putrid is not. Can, no, because the pot now, because it had dairy, now it's called a dairy pot and a meat pot. So you have to purge it to bring it back to a non-status status. It's a parv pot. Once you purge it, then it becomes parv. There's a whole. Well, we'll, we'll get, we'll, yeah. So now there's a question. The Chumrah of Rashi, if you cook potatoes in a meat pot, which hasn't been used for 24 hours, okay? And now you want to put cream on those potatoes. Does Chumrah the Rashi apply in that case? Because you extract what, did, what was extracted. You extracted Tam Lukam, putrid. So are we machmir to that degree? Right? So I would say logically, definitely not. The Chochmes Odom, who's the Chay Odom, says you should be machmer. That even if the pot wasn't used for 24 hours and you cooked parv in there, you should not put cream on that, on those potatoes. But if, no, if you did even within 24 hours, you're permitted. Even within 24 hours, you can. It comes up, it doesn't happen that often with the potatoes, but a person, somebody bakes a kugel or something, a parva kugel, in a, in a meat, let's say potato kugel, usually it's parv. But sometimes that pan is used for meat. Right? And now you want to serve that potato kugel at a dairy meal. Right? So it's a whole question. So if, it, if, you, if you, you say, if the 24 hours is not a problem, you can serve it at the Even Ashkenaz. Chach Masodim says no. That since it's seen as a, a meat pot, we give it all the stringencies of a regular meat pot, therefore you're not permitted to serve it with the dairy. Yeah. But what's the rationale? What's the rationale? The rationale is posh. It's simple. Now, after 24 hours, if something's no stam of gum, it's putrid. So why, why can't I take a meat pot after 24 hours, cook dairy, and wait, wait, clean it out after 24 hours, cook meat again? So why can't I? Said Mark, because it's a zero. Because a person loses calculation. Is today meat or is tomorrow? Like like Howard. One day he shows up with a with a with a yellow marker, and next day with a green marker. You know, to the faces tomorrow. We have what's we're, what is to today? Okay. Okay. So therefore, because yeah. a person becomes confused, you could actually be in violation of, of, of cooking basa b'cholov, yeah. right? So that's the question. So since we, we, we don't differentiate between, between uh, eno benyom benyom regarding usage of the pot, so the chumra, I, because you're using it l'chatchila, it's not the evidence you used it. It l'chatchila, using it, therefore, <coughs> you treat it, you have to maintain the identity of the vessels. Because if you lose the track, so yeah, even though if you lose it at worst to worst, it's Chumrit Rashi, doesn't make a difference. Ashkenaz, that, that's what he, others argue, others argue but, but the minog, the accepted minog is, even in a ben yomo, you cook something, parv in a meat pot, you, you don't put cream on it, or you don't put butter on it. And the matter, Ron's going to discuss a case. Now we have a case, you have meat cooking in an oven, and you bake bread in the oven. You have meat, a roast in the oven, big oven, and you're baking bread in that same oven. Same, same time. time. So now, the meat, we can see, the bread is not what? Is not meat bread. Why don't you sit down and look in the run? Okay? Torah Shabal Peh. The question is, who pe, whose Peh is it? We just read about Vavitha Hashem Espioso. We have spent many months. Okay? Okay. So the Peh. Okay? So now it's they're both in the oven simultaneously. Is the bread parv? So we'll see in a moment the bread is parv. Yet the riff rules that you're not permitted to eat that bread with dairy. That, that's the psaka of the riff. That he's going to ask on this in a minute. 
because he calls it Dovish Eishel Matirin. It's a Dovish Eishel Matirin. Even though, in terms of the amount of absorption, you have 60 times as much bread as it's called Zeo. Zeo means there's like there's moisture in the air, in the, in the air. Even though you have 60 times as much of that, but when do we say Bittel? You only say Bittel when it's what? When it's Dovish Eishel Matirin. So if it would be non kosher meat, you'd be able to eat the meat. The bread, whatever way you want to eat it. But since the meat is kosher meat, and you don't have to have the bread necessarily with dairy, therefore we don't allow you to have it with dairy. Then you can eat the bread with anything you want. That's Dovashesh Matirin. The rib says that's Dovashesh Matirin. Since you don't have to eat it with dairy, that's called Dovashesh Matirin. So even though you have 60 to 1 in terms of the volume of the bread versus the moisture, you're not permitted. We treat it as fleshka bread. As meat bread. So th that Ran has a problem. Ran just established that Davashesh Lamatirin, if it's two different species, 60 to 1, it's over. It's absumed. So we're dealing with bread and meat. So that's the Ran's kasha on the riff. That's, that's what the Ran goes to discuss the difficulty with the riff's psak. Okay? You follow me? You follow me? That, that's a problem. Mm. That, 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 that's a problem. Because firstly, no, whenever you bake it in the oven, no, no, no. Sometimes you have the residue, this fat. You know, you have the, like cheese. You touch cheese, oh. your hands become fatty. When you're dealing, let's say they make cheesecake or that, it's not just dairy in, in the bread and green. First, bre dairy bread you're not permitted to eat. No, it's not dairy bread. It's, uh, it's bread so no, but it's baked in a place once they bake cheesecake or right, these things. Right. It's more than just uh, like uh, milk powder. Right. You're dealing with, with fat. There's a fattiness. No. There, you really have to burn out the oven. The Gemara says in Psochim that if you have an oven where you, you put fat, you used to smear, and, and the fat is absorbed in the walls of the oven, yeah. you have to burn that oven out. Because there's no way you could wipe it out. When you're dealing with substance, you could wait three days. Doesn't make, no time of God, future is only when it's absorbed in the walls of the vessel, where there's no substance. But if you have substance, it, it's a problem. Okay, so then, then it's probably there's no substance there. That, that's yeah, exactly that, no. That, that, that this this is like putting cream on the on the potatoes. Right. Once, once you have substance, it's a problem. It has nothing to do with this discussion. Right, right. Well, 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 we'll see. The riff says you, once that happens, you can't eat. You can't eat it, 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 it takes. You want to eat, if you eat the bread, you're still parv. But to eat it with dairy, the riff says you're not permitted. So it runs as sun. It doesn't make any sense. It's, it's been shayn amino. We're talking about bread is once up. It should, should be bottom of shishim. And you have shishim. You definitely have shishim in the bread versus whatever it absorbs. That's, that's the discussion we're now. With this introduction, you can appreciate the question. Okay? So he says... Here? You had to say you had bread baking while meat was being broiled in the same oven. The Mai, where is it? The Mai Dam, where is it? The Mai the The Riff rules, you can't eat it with Kutach. Kutach is with, with sour milk. Right? With, with sour cream. Kutach. Avagab the Kaimlo and the Rechelab Milsi. Even though recha, recha means, even though there's no substance, it's purely the moisture. Like when you have an intense smell, that's called recha. And we, we say it's love mil, it doesn't have any value. Hainu time, the riff says, you know why? Because since 
you don't have to eat it with the meat. You don't have to eat it with the dairy. Eat it parv. No, because reicha, even though it's lav milsa, what's lav milsa means? Once it's so well, minuscule, no, 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 it is something. But it's so s- minuscule, whatever's absorbed, and you always have shishim. But since over here, the Rif says it's lav shishim atirin. Of course, we don't have to eat it with kutach. Therefore, even though you have more than shishim, doesn't make you shouldn't eat it with kutach. But that's the difficulty. Oh, yeah, but that's the difficulty. But if we're dealing with... Yeah, but that, that's his question. But if I'm in Bermino, it's not. That's his question. He says, if you can eat it with meat, who says you have to eat it with cream cheese? Right? You don't put cream cheese on your bread. I feel well for the bottle. I feel well for the bottle. I feel bottle. The Efshar, so Rod says it's impossible. The Rift did in this Mishnayus. The Mishnayus we just cited that Dovashish Matir is only not permitted when it's Min Bimino. When it's the same substance. If it's two different substances, it's subsumed. E Efshar, you hear what he says? He's not for kosher. E Efshar, it's not possible. Kamoshe Kosavnu, Rice Bruos. He's saying about the Rift. There's no way the Rift could say It's not possible. No, no. Riff, the Ran lived hundred, a few hundred years after the Riff. He was the last Rishon. The Ran was the last Rishon. The Riff was from the early Rishon. The Riff was two generations before the Rambam. Okay? The Omru, Shevshe, Shemacha, Ravzal, Al Osa, Shem Pek Mashilin. He says, maybe he relied on another sugya somewhere else. Kabi Isha, Sholem, Mayim, Melech, Liso. Rikarag, Leishtein. Yeah, what happens? The Aloch is, okay, review a little bit of Bayah. Okay, the halacha is, we discussed this. A person, we speak about a tchum. You're not permitted to go beyond more than 2,000 amas beyond the city limits. Let's see what you want to extend it. So if you make an Erev tchum in, you put food at that location, you extend it maximum not to 2,000 amas. But if you extend it in one direction, on the other direction, you can't go at all, you can't leave the city at all. Mm-hmm. So what happens? Now you have a guest on Yom Tif, And he made the tchum going in the other direction. You're to the south. You could go 4,000 to the south, he go 4,000 to the north. Okay? Now, you want to lend him some ingredients for him to bake. You want to lend him. But you realize, and he lives outside, outside this, out, out, you can't go beyond to the north even as much as, as an inch. Or your possessions, because when Yom Tov begins, your possessions identify with you. So what happens now? You have a piece, a, a loaf of bread. This woman borrowed ingredients from many people. The flour is the majority of the ingredients. Salt, water. Now the question is, what status does this bread have? Is this blo- bread locked into everybody's tum? Right? What do we say? No. We say the ingredients being a minority, it's assumed. And therefore, it's based on whoever has the majority of the ingredients. That's the tum. That, that's the Gemara quoting in, in the Mishnah. So it says over there, Hare Karagli Shtein. Whoever contributed to the bread, it's limited to wherever both of them could go. So. The common area, they both, it could be eaten there, outside they can't. Uparchinon, the Gemara asks a question, Beyo, liftu mayu melech l'gabiyiso, the majority of ingredients is flour. So why isn't the bottle, we say, bitl barov, and it's 60 to 1? Upikka ravasu, we shouldn't have a dove sheish matirin. Vafila belef lo What am I dealing with? I'm dealing with different ingredients. Over there, it's min beino mino. Aivo mayu melech l'gabiyiso, min beino mino. So from, from the Gemara in Bayo, we see differently than we showed. So he says, maybe the Rif, they want to say he's relying on that Gemara in Bayo, that even Min Bayo Mino is called Davish Matirin. Right. Alma Afil Shlob Mino Lo So he says, Vimi Ho Lo He says, no, there's no proof. The Ran says, that's not a basis to answer the Ran. There's no proof from that Gemara. Why? The shiny Mayu Melch came to Isa Lomis Avdo Elobu Min Kamino Dummy. What is a bread made of? When you speak about two species, one has no relevance to the other. What is the value of the water? The water versus bread. You can't make bread without, without water. So factually, that's called Min Bimino. The, the essence, that is what it is. When you have two things which have no relevance to another and they mix, okay. So that's called two species. You have one species versus another. But here they're commingled. They're all functioning as one entity. That that you see as one. That that's called min bimino. Since so wait 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 wait. So he says that's why that Gemara has no relevance to that whole discussion here. Okay, teida to prove it. 
Daminum Bri Shmaitz Dosan Kimachin of Lifto Mayim Melach Gabi Iso Rava Harin Sarif Kab Chitim Shlob Asuras Kab Shel Chavero Yochal Halo Vchode Achichu Lo Ivomer Reb Aushia Shapo Obud Nachichu Maishno Chitim Besorim Lo Komer Lo Alim Mim Shein Aminu Whatever Lo Komer Mayim Melach Gabi Iso Chitim Besorim Okay El Div Rishonim Besorim Okay So We're Back to Square One. Where the riff, we don't understand the riff. The riff says that since you don't have to eat the bread with dairy, therefore it's a double shishamatir. It's permitted without dairy. But the question is, but it's no mino. It's bread versus meat. Right? Two species, you have 60 to 1, it should be subsumed. He says, he says now, now he's going, what's the rationale? Why, Howard, you're missing the punchline, okay? Why do we differentiate min ben mino b'sheinu mino? Why? The ra now we're going to rationale, you want to know. Why do the Chalom say, if it's min ben mino, it's not subsumed, if it's min b'sheinu mino, it is subsumed, okay? So he says, the time of over the Chazin the Rabbon the Rabbi Now we cite something interesting. There's an argument in, uh, in two locations in Chulin and Yuma. We had it that if you have two species, like like guys, here. Let's say kosher meat, kosher beef, non-kosher beef falls into kosher beef. You have a thousand pieces of kosher meat versus non-kosher meat. The Chacham say it's butter. Right, and that's the way we rule. Rabbi Yudha says it's not bottom. Min be mina ain't no bottom. Ain't no bottom. It's not subsumed. Now the question is why? Why is it not subsumed? Very interesting. And each one brings a proof. They bring a proof. The Torah says, Avodis Yom Kippurim. Right? So you're talking about this. The Kohen, he slaughters an ox. Right? Ox is par. Par. So the blood of an of a ox is more than the, 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 the blood of a what? Of a goat. It says he does each one. Then he takes the blood of the ox and the blood of the of, of the goat and mixes the blood. And after he mixes this, and now he takes the blood of the ox and the goat and he sprinkles it. What do you mean he takes the blood of the goat? If you mix the blood of the goat and the, and the blood of the ox, you, there's only there's only blood of the ox. It's subsumed. Rabbi Yosef says, "See, the answer is min bemino, since it's blood and blood. The principle of, of subsuming bittel we don't say by min bemino." Otherwise, the pasuk says, "Loka midama pa midama soyer." Since the, the the volume of 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 ox blood is so much more than goat blood, how does this, the Torah refer to them after the mix as you take the blood of both of them? The blood of the goat is already subsumed in the blood of the ox, right? So it's dama par. It's not dama soyer, and yet it's still identified as dama soyer. Besides that, min be min be min ain't no It's much more than one. You don't even need the 60s it's rabbinical. It's rabbinical. Bin bimino, it's chav betray bottle. As long as it's two to one, it's sufficient. Okay? You following? Sats or Yossi? The Chacham say, no, there's no proof in there. What is the principle of bittel? You have two things which cannot coexist, like something's also something's mutter. So you have, you have counter forces. So which one overpowers the other? Of course, it's the majority. What about if you have two forces which can coexist simultaneously? You're talking about two valid type blood that both of it can be sprinkled. Subsuming is one overpowers the other. It's not a, just a, a issue of volume, right? It's when you have counter forces and one volume wise is more than the other, it subsumes the other. But what about if they both, both bloods qualify to be sprinkled on the, on the Mizveach? So they're not counter forces, therefore they coexist. They go, only in Eim of Atlan says that since they're both qualified to go on the Mizbeach, they don't subsume one another. There's no basis for bittel. Let's say you have a salad, tomatoes and, 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 and cucumbers. And you have more tomatoes than cucumbers. You're going to say bittel? It's not bittel. They're both permitted to eat. What is the salad? It's comprised of cucumbers and tomatoes. That, that's the salad. Right? Same thing. Both bloods here are qualified to put on the Mizbeach. Terses, you take the blood of the dam, of the par, you take the dam of the sawyer. So therefore, the Chum say, no, that, that's called min, that has nothing to do with bittel. Nothing. But if you have min benino, where you have one isa, one heter, that's the equivalent of min benomino. 
even though in the physical makeup it's the same species, but one, let's say one's heter and one's iser. That's, that's like Minbein Omino, because that establishes yeah. counterforce. Right. You have kosher meat, you have non kosher meat. You have 60 pieces of kosher meat versus the one not kosher meat. In its physical makeup, it's identical. But, but they can't simultaneously, because if it's not kosher, you can't eat it. So the only way you're able to eat the non kosher if it's subsumed by the majority. So what's the majority? Kosher. Because there you have counterforces interplaying simultaneously. Therefore, it overpowers it. Okay? That's. But what about if I have double shishal material? Something that's not a bona fide iser. So even the chacham, when they say the physical, it may be the same species, but what about, it, it, it has to be, minimally, it has to have characteristic, you have to have two species. Isa hetero is like two species. What about even, what happened to iser is not really a bona fide iser. It could be, un, no, no, it could be undone like a nether. Nether could be undone. No, no, I, if, I, if I'm not matter, it's there forever. Right. As long as if it could be undone, that's not bona fide iser. Okay. The forces aren't sufficient to counter one another. Then we don't apply the principle of bittel. So therefore, that's like what? That's like dama par and dama soya. That's the chachomim. So that's the question. According to Rabbi Yehuda, iser is not sufficient to establish them as two different species. It has to be in the physical makeup. According to chachomim, even the halachic makeup, that's sufficient. Now, so what happens if you double shish matir? So what, when you have min bin mino double shish matir, what's, what's lacking? Then it's not two species. What about happens if you compensate it? It's truly two species. Double shish matir, where it's a bona fide and min bin mino. Physically. Everybody agrees. It's subsumed. Because you, oh, you have to have the two species to come into play to one should overpower the other. So if it's the same species, where it's not bona fide, yes, sir, they're basically the same. What about they're not physically the same? And once us, one has, even though one's a devshishman, it doesn't make a difference. One will subsume the other. Everybody agrees there. To be continued.